What's up guys and gals, today is a special review, double feature, it's going to be back to back, I don't know what I'm going to do it at the same time, but I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do it solo instead. Now, I wrote two of the heavy metal, cult classic, but I'm going to start with two, it's a sequel instead. I'm not going to save the first one for last. The sequel, why not talk about it first? Um, because it's pretty much like a different story, you know, it's not like the first one. And I can see why a lot of people hated it, but at the same time, there's a few fan base for it. I personally enjoyed it. I never hated it, as a lot of people do. But um, I felt like the style of animation for this is really well missed. And what's amazing about Heavy Metal 2000 is the animation, because when the credits rolled up, right, and in, in this era, we got a lot of anime shit going on. And there's nothing wrong with anime. I love anime personally. Like there's a lot of movie reviews that was kind of like shy away from anime, and that will, they will not talk about it too much, you know. But I'm one of those few, 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 few movie reviews that will talk about anime movies or anime TV series. But with anime community on YouTube, like expanded like an army base now, it's like so much of them. It's like I'm one of those few, few movie reviews that like don't want to do it too much since there's already a cop competition for it, and I don't mean to say the word competition, but that's what it feels like to me, you know, but, um, but what, let me tell you what I like about the animation on this, because if you look at the credits, no, there's not, they're not even one Japanese animator or anime company in this, but don't get fooled, there are ages that are involved with the animation, you got like Vietnam anim animator, Bangkok animator, which I was, I saw something with Bangkok one, I'm like, are you serious, Bangkok? Vietnam, Manila from Philippine animator doing this, but mainly it's usually European based like from Germany and Canada animator. So you got a mix, but when it comes to the Asian animation part of it, it's kind of interesting to see that, you know, or Chinese animators doing this. Not one Japanese from the country, Japan, that does anime. I was like kind of like dumbfounded. I'm like, dang, not one Japanese people, wait, no anime, no anime word on it. <laughs> but, um, let me just talk about the special features first. Um, Digitally remastered audio, video, widescreen, feature audio, you know, English and so on, subtitles. You got a feature Julie Strange Super Goddess featurette, voice talent featurette, isolated music score, animation test, photo gallery, fire animatic comparisons, vehicle trailer, adaptive menus, and scene selection. And this is how the DB look. And let me just say this morning I was watching Heavy Metal 1 2000 back to back, so. I just got I just got done eleven thirty in the morning just now Sunday. Um, Heavy Metal two thousand. Uh, this is what the DVD look like. Let me show it to you. And um, now I'm, I want to move my head freely. Um, Heavy Metal two thousand. Um, I don't know if I can say it's a, a, a true sequel to Heavy Metal one, but it does have like the evil crystal thing. You know, it it was the glowing green, but the story for the crystal in this is like. Mainly a potion, you got these miners, and one of the miners touched the crystal. He went berserk, killed one of his co workers, and he started hijacking the ship. And then he found like the crystal, like, give him immortality, but only for a limited time, you know. So he got to keep on, keep, keep on drinking the potion. And I mean, I do like the villain in this movie, you know, he's like one of those timing villain type characters, you know. So he hijacked the ship, he wants to look for this crystal, you know. Or like the mortality water thing, and then he invaded this planet, which was a bunch of peaceful people. And Julie Strange, her character, was living on the planet with her sister, her father, and then the, the tyrant. And he invaded, destroyed this planet, like destroyed the people who was living on this planet. Excuse me. And he left with one of his um comrade, comrades just to be stranded on the planet, and he kidnapped one of the girls who happened to be Julie Strange's sister. You know, so he kidnapped the girl. You know. And then the villain took off Judy Swain's character, saw her people being destroyed by this tyrant, and she saw a survivor, that was so, so, like a survivor president on the planet, and she realized it was one of the one of the guys that was with the tyrant. And the guy starts saying, no, no, I never killed no one. And then Julie Swain started taking him aboard with him to the ship to cut down the tyrant. And then she faced the tyrant on the, um, this, um, like this platform ship-like. Where, where ships could go in and out, you know, hanging out. And she saw the tyrant in the bar. She sat shooting the tyrant. She realized the tyrant was immortal, you know, because... But she didn't realize the tyrant was immortal, excuse me. But when she shot the tyrant with the 
pop up of two bullets and stuff. She realized that the time was unstoppable. Kind of got the grenade, blew up the ball. Julie Strange kind of was unconscious. The, um, the the guy who used to be with the tyrant, you know, told Julie Strange about, about like he was like unstoppable, you know, like you never give him a chance to explain that because Julie Strange was kind of like bitchy about him. So now they went back on the ship following the tyrant to the planet where the tyrant's gonna where the where the water is and the mortality. And then when the tyrant landed on the planet, Julie Strange's captain and the guy who was with her landed on the planet at the same time. Um. She's following her with two people that were born on the planet to go with her. And then she wants to have a against the tyrant while he's in a arena battle with one of these lizard creatures. And so he can take so the tyrant can take so the evil tyrant can take control of them. Once he got in control of the of the lizard creatures, you know, by killing the leader, Julie String goes undercover like a sex slave, trying to kill him a second time. But then the rock creature kept her away because, you know, he th she thought I mean he thought she was in trouble. So she got mad, and then Tyrant got mad, and he got almost killed by this gun the second time around. They gonna go after her, and then um, then the and then the uh, I mean the Odin, one of the people of the planet, excuse me, and the rock creature sent her to a place where she could clean herself in the water, be prepared with a suit that she saw in the front cover, and get the get her sword ready, and then. The Tyrant decided to invade, this, invade the um, council base with uh, all the peaceful creatures they had and then defend the, defend, um, base so the Tyrant could not get the mort water mortality. And I almost spoiled the ending because I thought the ending had a nice little twist because there was a traitor among them. You know, let's put it like that. But she fights the Tyrant one on one. She does get help in fights against the Tyrant. And then you have another twist to this little movie. But just to fast forward, no spoilers. Um, speaking for me, I highly enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was good. To me, it felt something like from the Heavy Metal, Heavy Metal magazine. You know, that's just my opinion. So I say go get it. I mean, you get it for under seven dollars. That's how much I got for like under seven dollars. So yeah, you get it cheap. So that's not a bad deal, guys, right? I mean, come on.